Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and today let's go over and speculate a little bit about all the information that dropped today. None of it's confirmed, but we're going to be pretty close. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the gear. We have a lot to look at. There's the pinnacle weapons, returning exotics, new ones, and there's a lot of cool things that look like they're from the past. So Bungie has started their teasing for Season of Opulence. We're very close. We have the Forges, we had Gambit Prime. This one looks really fun as far as replayability. We have a day one raid, and then they talk about the six man activity, the Menagerie. Kallus has crafted a maze of challenges and has lost vaults. Test your strength in the all new six player match made activity, the Menagerie. Meet the challenges to unlock your rewards. In this activity, it states that you can choose your reward at the end. Maybe you just actually get to pick it, or maybe it's like Trials of the Nine when we had you either choose a weapon or a piece of gear. You had three to choose from, something like that. Regardless, I love that they're doing this. So the roadmap's gonna be on screen. You can see Truth, the Lumina Hand Cannon. Nothing against Gambit Prime, Joker's Wild, The Forges, but to me, there's a lot more to look forward to with Season of Opulence. It's something that can bring the entire community together, and not to mention anything else that pops up. And just looking at the six player activity, looking at the raid, you can kind of see where the nerfs are pointed at. With these activities, I don't think that they want Six Whispers in there with Wells and Tethers just blowing everything up, so I'm excited to get in there. There's a theme with this, with Kallus, the Vault, Leviathan. The theme is some of our favorite things from the past are coming back with a new look. They show some of the gear, and let's start here, like a hard stop. This looks like one of my favorite snipers of all time in Destiny, the LDR 5001, long distance relationship. You can see that the barrel and the stock are the same, also the mag, just the body's gonna be different. The body's kind of callous bedazzle, but I was glancing over it, saw those three things. This could also be Everdeet Spear or the Epitaph. If it's high impact, it's definitely Everdeet Spear, but regardless, every Destiny player has their weapon. This one's mine. If you've been with me for a long time, all the way back in the Destiny 1 days, you know that the LDR and I are very close. It's my number one priority going into the Season of Opulence, even if it's the Spear, because I love these weapons. It's going to be my number one thing to go for. Looking through the trailer, you can see some robes on this Warlock, and we were talking to my Discord, a member by the name of Lunar pointed this out. These look strikingly similar to the old Regalia pieces from Destiny 1 Iron Banner. Same type of pattern on the chest, so this could be a look into the future of what we're going to see with Iron Banner, some of the gear we might get. We do have an exotic sighting. This is Kepri Sting from Destiny 1, and hopefully it still works the same. With Kepri Sting, the exotic perk was Touch of Venom. Gain invisibility after crouching in place after a short time. Melee attacking an enemy from behind while invisible delivers 4 times damage, and melee attacks apply a lingering damage effect. What was so cool with these is that any class can go invisible, even Gunslinger. And when you're invisible, you melee an enemy from behind, you do massive damage. This could be the first step to trying to take out supers in PvP and Destiny 2. And in PvE, that 4 times damage pairs with something like Brawler, or the 1-2 punch shotgun, or a debuff on an enemy. It could be really, really fun, really, really good. Now, if you meleeed an enemy from the front, it poisoned them. Kind of like Thorn. Back when Cami Cakes was on Xbox, this is something that we would do. From a long distance, you would throw your throwing knife, you would immediately crouch, turn invisible, and the knife would hit and poison them from Kepri Sting. It would be a one-shot. It was very hard to do, but very satisfying. And in PvE, you can go through harder sections being invisible and back to PvP. It was just so fun. I mean, I could see it now. You hear a Fist of Havoc pop, you immediately crouch, wait for them to walk by, and then you just one-shot them in the back. I love these so much. I'm really excited to play with them. It also looks like the Peregrine Greaves are coming back, and these were brutal. The Brawler modifier, again, just like we were talking about with Kepri's. These could be really nasty, and they were also a surefire way to take out any super in the game in the Crucible. So again, these could be the steps taken to help take out supers in PvP. The Flying Tiger Knee is back. It shows some of the new armor in various frames, and just like the LDR, this fusion here looks like something like Peregrine's Fire. Again, you take away the body, you look at the stock and the coil. Very underrated fusion in Destiny 1, and I'm so glad that more Voofs are coming in. And we need more viable ones that aren't high impact. And from all the screens, this fusion appears to be void. The SMG looks like Mida Mini Tool, and that means the Mida Mini Tool might be updated, but in more so, it's just a different weapon, but it has random rolls. It could be decent, but there's a part of me that kind of wants it to be a direct upgrade to Mida Mini Tool. That way, you get the bonus that it gives you with Mida. We have a big one here, looking at everything, looking at the barrel. You could say that this is Ice Luna, like 100%, but let's remember real quick, the gun model has always been in Destiny 2 since beta. And even now, if you want, go into a custom match with a friend. The six-shooter golden gun is a last word model, but the three-shooter, since there's no fanfire animation, is Ice Luna. It's always been Ice Luna, and I'm so stoked for this. Maybe a perk or two from Destiny 1 comes back, like Hidden Hand or possibly Luck in the Chamber. I seriously doubt that. I really hope Luck in the Chamber doesn't come back, but... Ice Luna has always been a fan favorite. 
We saw it in the trailer and on the calendar, we have Truth. Truth in Destiny 1 is kind of like Mita Multi-Tool. It doesn't have anything flashy, there's no pyrotechnics, there's no cool animations. The Truth was all business. It had two great perks, both of them very potent and working together. Grenades and Horseshoes, which was highly regarded in Destiny 1 on rocket launchers. The rocket detonates when enemies are in close proximity, so now in Destiny 2, when you track something with a low velocity rocket, if that object moved too fast out of the way, the rocket would just sail and fly away. With grenades and horseshoes, when it gets close, it detonates. And it will get close because a second perk was Truth Seeker. Rounds aggressively seek their target. Think Two-Tailed Fox velocity. I mean, sure, with Two-Tailed Fox, it kind of comes out a little bit slow, but then they move. Very, very fast, and that's how fast I believe Truth's going to be. In PvP and PvE, this rocket will put in work, and maybe it has tripod, or maybe it can hold two rockets. We do have a shotgun. This does look like Party Crasher, Fellwinter, Matador. These shotguns were a part of a lot of players' loadouts in Destiny 1, for the most part at least, and I would really like to see where the RPM falls on this and the impact. Is it more so Balagant? Is it a brand new RPM class? I will definitely be grinding for this one. And while we're here, these could have some new perks as well. All of these weapons that we're talking about could bring back old Destiny 1 perks or brand new ones, so keep all that in mind. Quickly, we do have a Drang type James Bond sidearm here. It's very cool, and it's a very unique weapon model. I think these are pretty cool. We have the swords. I'm not going to talk about them too, too much. It could be Ray's Lighter, an old Destiny 1 sword, or possibly another one. Who knows? Looking through, we have this one right here, this hand cannon. I'm open to all suggestions on what you guys think on this one. Here's what's really odd about it. First, it's plain. It's kind of got a text mechanic a vibe to it. It's scuffed up a little bit, though. The back of it looks like an old Destiny 1 hand cannon, Lord Hyfix, or the devil you know, but the barrel had some odd things about it. The top, it kind of looks like those hand cannons, but it has this large gap in the middle. And the end of the barrel looks odd. It's almost as if, if you were to throw Thorn on the front of this hand cannon, it would be alright. It's actually one of the most intriguing ones to me, because I have no idea where it's coming from. Don't know if it's an exotic, if it's a raid weapon, anything like that, but it's so simple, and I like that about it. It's simple, yet unique at the same time, especially that barrel. I want to know what you guys think. Looking through the trailer, we have another exotic up here. This is the Warlock's Astrocyte Verse. In Destiny 1, you get a temporary increase to recovery after Blink. Now, this could actually work in Destiny 2 with how everything's set up, and I've said it before with the Boolean Gemini from Destiny 1, that would really work in Destiny 2, because there's a part of me that feels like some of these things were made for Destiny 2, but pushed into Destiny 1, if that makes sense. Because Bully and Gemini had one way or another. With a headshot, you get increased mobility for a short time, and if you hit someone with a body shot final blow, you get increased armor or resilience. So getting that recovery could actually work in Destiny 2. Maybe kind of like the Karnsteins would give you constant regen. It is, though, one of the coolest, most gorgeous pieces of gear in Destiny's history. This thing is awesome looking. There's probably more, but those are the ones that I wanted to really go over. But let's talk about the pinnacle weapons real quick. Let's remember Recluse, a lot of players were down on it and thought that it was going to be really bad, but here we are. It's good. Let's start off with the pinnacle sniper, the revoker. This one looks like Eye of Soul from Destiny 1 Trials. Its main perk is Miss Shots Return Magazine after a short duration. So all this is is a guaranteed mulligan, and I'm okay with that. It's not like Icebreaker, it only procs on missed shots. It's not really game-changing or overbearing like Luna or Recluse, it has its place. If you hit a headshot, no ammo comes back. If you hit a body shot, no ammo comes back. You get flinched off your target, miss your shot, it comes back. I'm perfectly fine with that, and I do wonder how quick that cooldown is because this could be a really good sleeper PvE weapon. On console, sometimes it's tough to land follow-up shots on enemies with the sniper rifle. So what if it had a magazine of 4 or 5, you land a couple, but you miss one or two. You get down to the bottom end of that mag, but then it starts returning. It could be really good in that aspect. You're going to have no damage lost. You just need to make sure that you aim high, so if you miss, it doesn't hit the body and it can return some to the magazine. I think this is a really cool concept. Nothing flashy, it doesn't need to be very, very special like Luna in my opinion. I think it's in a right spot. We're just, again, gonna have to see in-game how it plays. For PvP, it really depends on that duration, if it has snapshot. And with this, we'll again have full judgment when it comes and it's in our hands. The Pinnacle Vanguard weapon is the Drum Grenade Launcher Wendigo GL3, but it's going to be known as Edge Transit's final form. Like, its perk, Orbs of Light increase Blast Radius and Damage, and I'm not sure if you've taken a stroll with Prospector lately, but these Drum Launchers rip. It's going to be Masterwork, so you're going to be creating Orbs to power it up. Not to mention Orbs from other Supers, and you could even use like a Masterworked Spare Rations or one of the new weapons that's Masterworked. You get a double kill on some adds to spawn an Orb, you bring out that Grenade Launcher, you run over that Orb to get the more damage. I really like the concept of this. And finally, the Gambit Pinnacle Weapon, the Hush Bow. Hip-fired precision shots grant a massive draw speed bonus. Again, I don't know what to think about this one, because you would have to think it's going to be a high impact bow, like with a slow draw time. That way the draw time is noticeable when you get that perk to proc. 
but when the Val came out with Crimson, it's literally the fastest bow that you can get in the game as far as draw time, and it wasn't really that fast. If you're caught out in the open, you'd get taken down. Maybe there's a Rampage or a Kill Clip effect with that perk to go with it, or maybe like in Crimson Doubles, it has that kind of speed when drawing it, like super, super fast. It's the only one, like, I have no idea how it's gonna work. So I'm pretty stoked about all this, guys, and on Thursday, we should learn a little bit more with this week at Bungie. Now, I do have a feeling that a lot of this gear is gonna be old fan favorites, and the story arc is somehow Callus kept them or remade them, but through and through here, with this expansion, the raid's gonna have replayability, the six-man activity looks like it's gonna have replayability, there's gonna be new bosses coming out every week or so, we're probably gonna have a few weapons here or there added to the loot pool in PvE or PvP. They say that Benedict's gonna have objectives to complete during the hunt. As we progress through the season, more content's gonna come to light, quests leading to exotic gear. On paper, just from seeing this, it looks like a lot of fun and a little bit more involved than Joker's Wild and Black Army, cause both of those were fine. But I do think that the whole player base can rally behind Season of Opulence, more so than the other ones. I, for one, am very excited to get in there. So if you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button. We have a chill bunch over here. Remember to like or comment if you guys see fit. But I want to know what you guys think about this, our first taste of Season of Opulence. What do you think about the gear, the match-made activity? What is your overall thoughts? Thank you guys for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.